use a concealer that is not too light like sometimes we like that highlighted hey guys welcome back to another video i'm lj if you're new here so today's video is another tutorial video today we are covering how to prevent your makeup from causing that flashback from pictures trust me i've struggled with this a lot there has been horrible pictures where my makeup just comes out looking ashy and jacked up but like in reality it really doesn't look like that so today i'm going to be showing you guys how to avoid that and the techniques hopefully will help some of you guys that are looking to create a makeup base without a flashback so if you're interested let's get into it KLJ, welcome to a channel where it's popping Welcome to our YouTube. So before we get started with the video, I want to introduce you guys to Kinder Beauty subscription box. So if you're not familiar with them, they are a clean, cruelty-free, and vegan subscription box where subscribers can get up to $165 worth of hand-picked skincare, makeup, and hair care products each month for as little as $23 a month. When you subscribe, your first box will be the Kinder Faves box, which is $122 worth of product it comes with a pamphlet that shows you guys exactly how to use each product and what the benefits of the products are also new subscribers who sign up for the three to six month plan can get a free subscription box worth 85 dollars of products the good thing is you can also earn rewards for each month's box and kinder beauty will donate a portion of the profits to their premier charity partners so if you're interested check the link in the description box down below to sign up and you can use my code lj50 to get 50% off your first box. Okay, so today's video is going to be a tutorial on how to get the perfect foundation base with no flashbacks. So for those of you guys who don't know what a flashback is, it's like when you take a picture, when you have makeup on, and you take a picture with flash and it gives you that white, washed out, ashy looking type of finish and your face will look like powdery. You can see the powder, it looks white and ashy. That is called a flashback. So I'm gonna show you guys how to get like the flawless base without the flashback first things first i'm going to start off by priming my face of course you want to use a primer but one tip that i can give you guys is don't use a primer with spf i find that spf gives you a washed out ashy looking finish even when you apply it i've tried so many of them some of them say like oh no white cast but when you put on makeup, for me, I feel like it still leaves that white cast. Especially when you take a picture with flash. So one of my favorite go-to primers is this Milk Hydro Grip. It's perfect. It's just hydrating and really sticky. So it does the job. Once you apply primer, you want to go in with foundation. So if you wear foundation that is not your undertone or it's not your skin tone, when you take a picture, it's not going to look like your skin. So you want a foundation that is like almost like your skin color. One of my favorites is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Foundation. I love this foundation because it's hydrating. And the shade that I use is 190W, which is a perfect match for my skin. So now I'm blending this out with a beauty blender. And as you can see, like this is my perfect undertone. It's my perfect skin tone. It looks very similar to my skin color. So when I am taking a picture with flash, it's going to look just like my skin. With foundation, I would also say don't use a foundation with an SPF, such as like a tinted moisturizer or CC cream. You know, just any of those foundation-like products that have SPF. I feel like skin tints are perfect if you're going for like a light coverage type of makeup look. So next is concealer. So concealer and setting powders are the two things that usually cause the flashback the most under your eyes. So for concealer, I would say use a concealer that is not too light. Like sometimes we like that highlighted type of look on our skin, but honestly, you have to be a little bit realistic. If you want a highlighted look, use a concealer that is not more than three shades lighter than your skin. So three shades lighter is good. If you're looking for a concealer just to conceal, use one that is maybe one or two shades lighter. Don't go over three because I feel like if you go like four or five shades, it might give you that flashback. So I really like the Rare Beauty Concealer. This one is in the shade 430W. This one is my perfect undertone. It's also my perfect skin tone because it's not too light. So I'm gonna go ahead and blend this out with Beauty Blender. So as you can see, 
the concealer is almost close to my skin tone it's just about like three shades lighter if i wanted to get a more highlighted look i would go three shades lighter versus two shades lighter so this one's perfect matches my undertone and matches my skin tone and it's not too light all right so next is setting the skin and this tip right here is the most important and it's the one that's going to give you the best results you want to set your skin with a pressed powder that is close to your skin tone before getting into setting powder that is lighter than your skin tone because the concealer is already light you want to set that with something that's close to your skin tone before putting on another lighter shade so i'm gonna use the nyx can't stop won't stop pressed powder this one is in the shade of mocha so i'm gonna go in with this jacqueline cosmetics jh17 brush i feel like this brush is perfect to set under your eyes and what i like to do is i like to just grab a little bit of this powder you want to just take the powder and press it right underneath that concealer now this will do two things it will not give you any flashback from the concealer and on top of that it allows the concealer not to crease so your makeup is going to last even longer and you want to just set all the areas that you apply the concealer first and then set your whole skin all right once you set the concealer you want to go ahead and set the foundation as well so that everything stays put and won't move all right so next we have setting powder setting powders are also those things that cause flashback the most okay so most of the time for me my flashback was directly under my eyes like i would have that ashy look to my makeup and i realized the reason why is because i was using a translucent setting powder and i realized those are not the best powders to use especially if you're of deeper skin tone so i used to go in with the laura mercier translucent powder i still like the powder but for setting powder i don't like it i like it just as something that i'm putting on top of my makeup just to kind of add a little bit of a highlighted look but if you're using this as just a setting powder completely on its own on top of a concealer that will cause your skin to have that flashback especially if you have melanated skin so i would say use this just a little bit on top of your setting powder don't use it as the main source of setting powder another one is the revolution beauty banana deep setting powder this one says banana deep like it's for deep skin but it still gives me that ashy look to it it just has a little bit of a yellow tone so this one is also one that i would say don't use it on its own and then lastly we have the cover effects perfect setting powder this one also gives me an ash flashback I actually usually don't use this at all because even on top of a regular setting powder that matches my skin it still gives me an ashy flashback some of the setting powders that I like are matte setting powders and some of them are for instance the Anastasia loose setting powder in the shade deep peach this has never given me a flashback like ever even when I place it on top of my concealer on its own so I really like this one another one I've raved about this all the time I've had this for years and it's still one of my favorites is the black opal deluxe finishing powder i use this all the time i've raved about this on my channel multiple times so if you have a flashback on your makeup when you take pictures i would recommend trying this setting powder i also like this makeup forever ultra hd setting powder i haven't tried this with photos so i'm still yet to try it i recently got it and it seems like the finish is perfect very similar to the black opal so i'm gonna go in with the maybelline fit me powder this one is in the shade medium deep i'm gonna use a setting powder that is a little bit lighter just to show you guys that placing that pressed powder underneath my concealer even if i use a powder that is too light for my skin it still won't give me that ashy flashback so as you can see the setting powder kind of adds back that highlighted look that the pressed powder took away from the concealer but at the same time it still just doesn't look like ashy it also gives me a flawless finish because it's a finishing setting powder all right so the last step is highlighter so highlighter is important because you want to make sure that you're using a highlighter that is not powdery if you're using a highlighter highlighter that has more powder versus highlight then it will leave a flashback because at the end of the day it's going to be too light you know so you're gonna see that ashiness on your skin and so for highlighter my go-to highlighter is always this artist couture diamond glow highlighter in the shade sugar daddy so this is my go-to highlighter because when i apply it it gives me that nice glowy finish and when i look forward i don't see the highlighter 
only when I turn to the side, that's when I'm able to see the highlighter and it looks nice and glowy, no powder at all. So with highlighter, I like to make sure that I'm applying it on the highest points of my bone structure, which is my cheekbones, my nose bridge, and at the top of my forehead. So last but not least, you wanna set this highlighter. So I usually like setting only the sides of my face. I don't like setting the center because sometimes it gets too oily. I feel like the sides of your face is the perfect place to set your skin because it melts the highlighter, it gets it to sink into your skin so it looks natural. So I'm gonna use this Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. And then you just wanna let this dry for about one minute and that's it. Okay guys, that's it for this video. I really hope this video was helpful for those of you guys who wanted to learn how to create a foundation base with no flashback. So when you're taking your pictures, it comes out flawless. Now, at the end of the video, I will leave pictures of my makeup without flashback to show you guys that this makeup look does not cause any flashback, okay? It's very much natural, skin-like, it's not powdery, it melts into my skin and it just looks like my skin with or without flashbacks so i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did leave me a thumbs up also subscribe if you haven't already i would love to have you on the lj family don't forget to check out my next tutorial over here but other than that i will see you guys in my next video okay lj welcome to a channel where it's